Canada in the rough. An all-new season comes to Sun News. Weekends at 8 and 8.30 a.m. Eastern. Join us. Uh, it's been one of the joys of waking up Saturday morning, having coffee, watching Keith Beasley and his brothers out hunting across Canada. Keith joins me now to talk about uh, the hunting season. Keith, I'll, I'll let you know, and we're sitting here with, uh, by the way, Ram's horns? Ram's horns, yeah. Ram's horns, yep. okay. From the Yukon. We have, well, you, you can tell the story of this in a minute and how this came about, but I'll tell you, I had you on over a year ago, mm -hmm. or about a year ago. Yep. Then you came on to announce that the show was going to be airing on Sun. I, I've had some flack from people who are generally pretty conservative folks going, wait a minute, what are you guys doing with hunting? I'm not sure about hunting. Uh, tell us about how you got into it in, in, and how you got this. Well, how we got in on the Sun was uh, there was a need to air the show. Um, Global had canceled it and Sun stepped up and said, we'll, we'll take that. We'll take an activity that's Canada's heritage and part of where the country's built and where it came from. And, and we aired a fantastic program. And, and this time of year is when I start getting interested in hunting, even though I don't. I have an interest in it because it's fall. It feels like I should be out killing something to eat. The leaves have turned. Yeah. The air's turned a bit, it's a little crisper, and, and every hunter across the nation gets excited this time because we live in a wonderful country with a wonderful resource, and that's what these animals are. They're table fair number one that feed our families. My freezer's out of moose this year. I can't wait to go to Quebec this week and hunt moose. This sheep right here will feed Kevin's family. He just got back from the Yukon on an amazing adventure with Tombstone Wilderness Adventures, and this 10-year-old ram, which is, which is a real old ram, was taken on the mountains of the Yukon, which is a, a fannin sheep that crossed between the white doll sheep and the blue stone sheep. A fannin's a cross. So, I mean, you have to go to the Yukon to get this. So now this is, let's just roll this over and see if the camera can get this. This is uh, what the, the full uh, ram's horns look like. Uh, this was not a, a baby sheep out meandering around. I mean, no. it, it's amazing that people will eat lamb and then be upset that you killed a 10-year-old sheep to eat. Right, and, th and that's, that's our point as hunters. We, we, we don't apologize for hunting. We don't apologize for eating meat to anybody. And if you choose not to eat meat, that's fine. But those of us that do, we just choose not to have the guy at the grocery store do it for us. So tell me what uh, a, a ram tastes like. Because I can't imagine, like, you know, old mutton can be tough. You have to do it a long time in stew. What would this taste like? <laughs> yeah, you got to remember, this is all very free-ranging, right? Completely natural grasses and foods and, and climates. So this, this ram sheep meat is, is tremendous, tremendous meat. And uh, it, it tastes fantastic. And, uh, and when you're on the mountain and you get it, it even tastes better because you're a little more hungry. You've been climbing 7,000 feet every day. Okay, so uh, I take it your brother had a little bit while he was he out there? He had a little bit while he was out there, absolutely. Okay. Now, I have told you before, uh, I don't hunt, but I shoot. Yep. There's a lot of guys across Canada that do that. If I decided that I wanted to, uh, to get into hunting, what would I need to be doing? What would I need to look for if yep. I wanted to get into Number hunting? Number one system that you need to do is take the hunter education course. Once you have that, you have it for the rest of your life, and you can hunt any season with that. And that so, goes so there's an actual course. It's not of just, course. well, I know how to shoot, yep. and I can put on camo and an orange hat, That's correct. so I'm fine. Ontario has, I think, over 150 qualified hunter instructors that have passed their course to teach. And this is pretty much across Canada, you have to take a hunter's Absolutely. course? Absolutely, yes. Okay. I took mine when I was, I was 13 years old, and uh, I was hunting legally when I was 15 with my dad, and uh, it just gets passed on. But if you didn't have the privilege like I did to have a father who taught us to hunt, um, you can go take that course right now, which you have to do legally. It teaches you all the safety factors about guns, about firearms, about animals, about species, about seasons, and then you can take the firearms course at the same time and receive both your licenses to carry a firearm and to hunt. If you don't want to be a firearm shooter, you can just take the hunter course, don't have to take the firearm, and you can hunt with a bow and arrow. You don't need the firearms course to hunt with the archery gear. Okay, so let's say that I wanted to do this deer season in, around my neck of the woods is mid-November, or I think there's a week in early November, one towards the end of the month. Um, is, is there enough time, about six weeks, is there enough time for me to, to do all that and then get kitted out? I mean, because I'm, I'm guessing that that's a time commitment with the, the, the course. And then yeah. there's going to be costs. Yeah, the costs are very minimal. The course, the course is, is, is not very expensive at all for what you get out of it. The cost to kit up, sure. Firearm, bow, arrows, um, gear, it costs some money. There's probably not enough time between now and hunting season because you need to go through the course, get it sent back from, from the government system to get your proper hunting license. But you should do it for next year, Brian, because living in the nation's capital, the white-tailed population around here is booming, and it's a tremendous, tremendous hunt. Well, it either ends up at, uh, being taken by a hunter, or it ends up on the hood of somebody's car. Yes. And that's why they've, they've increased it. Uh, what ages are 
is a good age to start introducing people to young people to hunting because my my son we were out camping uh, last week and people that follow on Facebook know this because I was posting pictures of the the campfire some of them mocking me for the campfire <laughs> it was raining folks uh, what he, my son said to me daddy uh, can we go hunting I want to try this he's 13 too young I don't think so at all. I mean, uh, my kids, I have four. Um, um, I start my kids when they're three or four on very safe, secure type of stuff, getting them outside, seeing wildlife, and then taking them on a little hunt with me, maybe for ducks or waterfowl, not the big game stuff. Um, just exposing them to what it is. I, I think our country's got away from, from uh, letting kids grow up in the old farm system where they, they see a cow raised and butchered and put on the kitchen table. So I don't think it's bad for our children to see that this is part of, of nature. It's part of, of humanity and a part of being healthy and eating organic clean meat that you know where it came from. Now, I remember telling a kid uh, in my neighborhood that his chicken nuggets, which was his favorite thing to eat, came from an actual chicken and he was mortified. Mortified. That, uh, yeah. they, well, no, 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 they come from McDonald's. There's no, no, they come from a chicken. There's something fundamentally wrong with that. We forgot about the principles. I went into school last year and, and I taught at my kid's school about, about animals, about antlers and horns and the difference and, and eating meat and putting it in our freezer. And kid, kids in a country setting were surprised by some of this stuff. But I'm not saying at three or five or 13, give them their own gun. That, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about expose them to it, get them outside, let them see nature and let them see that we harvest animals and we also eat those animals as part of a management practice, this is a 10-year-old ram. You can't shoot these until they're seven or eight years old. So all those other age classes, you only shoot about three, four percent of the population. The rest aren't being harvested to keep the management and the health of the herd. But there are some that need to be taken to help to help progress and, and do that. What's the uh, the best animal to introduce somebody to hunting with? Uh, I, duck. Deer, I think waterfowl, because water pound for pound, minute for minute, it's the most exciting. You're not spending seven days on a mountain just looking for one sheep. You can go to a lake anywhere in Ontario or across Canada and you can find waterfowl and it's constant. They're coming in a lot and it's a lot of fun and it's not the up close and intimate uh, reaction with a big game animal right away. This weekend though, what can we, if we tune in, 8 a.m. Saturday and Sunday morning, yeah. what can we watch? What the hour block, see? the first one, uh, Paul and I are in BC from an archived episode in season seven, taking black bears in the oats with archery gear and the rifle. And then the following one, Kevin's in, in Newfoundland hunting moose on the rock. All right, so uh, you can catch Canada in the Rough, 8 a.m. and 11 a.m. Saturday and Sunday. Don't miss it, set your PVR. Stick around, we've got more to come.